and I would like to speak about the Singapore media. I think both parties, traditional and new media, are sussing themselves, sussing each other. Um, you see information coming out in new media or social media, and traditional media catches up on the story and writes pieces on that. And then you see traditional media coming up with stories, and then social media doing stories, follow-up stories on that. I think we will find our place, and people like Kristen are the ones. I grew up seeing Vishwa being a journalist, and I thought that was possible. Thank you, I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was possible to do some form of uh, journalism within the constraints that was being talked about. Kristen is going, growing up in an environment where the information is out there. How are we going to harness this? And we talked about self-censorship, and th that's true. Uh, I think that's something that we, daily, we, 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 we grapple with daily in our own students. They come to us and tell us, can we do this, sir? Uh, is it possible for us to voice our opinions about this? Don't you think someone would say something? Say, no. If, if, if you say it the way it's supposed to be said, you are a journalist. You are trained to do that. So I don't think, um, as, as Cherian put it, five years down the road, there's going to be a gap. I, I see it as you're going to find some form of, of, of uh, common ground where each of us, each, each party is going to leave, learn to live with one another. I think yeah. it's important to recognize that there are many good people within the mainstream media who do fight their case and push the boundaries, who do good uh, journalistic work, sometimes investigative work, yeah. and bring to light stories about the poor and so on. And these are kind of the unsung heroes. Uh, there is also self-censorship, but I think the, the, the fact of the matter is we should call a spade a spade. I think picking up what Tan Hao said, at the end of the day, what we have is because of the laws and because of the way these laws are implemented, we have a structure where the media is controlled by the government. I think it is important to recognize that that is a fact. And that is out of line, not just with the mainstream in Western countries, but is it also out of line with the mainstream in high-income and middle-income Asian countries as well. And I'd like to add to that. And also, uh, would the government allow for independent newspaper organization to be set up? So today, we are only have two, right? Uh, SPH and Media Corps. So if tomorrow, let's say, uh, TR writers want to set up a newspaper, would I be given a license? The problem is not just that there is uh, insufficient freedom, but uh, that there is no diversity yep. resulting mm. from the license laws, right? So, uh, in fact, you might imagine that if there had been more, if there were more newspapers, the competition would, in a way, hopefully lead to a race to the top, right? Yep. And then the journalists would not uh, want to self-censor because the news may not be uh, are, are read. So I think that's a very important element. But the ways in which we think and practice uh, uh, um, uh, being citizens in a democratic society uh, where there is a lively public sphere. Mm. And I'm, I, I, I fear that if we just uh, ask for a change of the press freedom uh, and we get it, and the whole society does not change, right? And we really will not know what to do with this press freedom, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Or we'll do some things with it which uh, could be potentially harmful. I think that that is the whole issue sometimes, you know. When is the right time to open it up? So I think in, um, we have to accept that our society will become more diverse, there will be more voices, more views, uh, but we must learn how to live with them, to accept differences that uh, we will not all agree on the same thing, but they will be way out for, for us, for Singapore, the way we want it. The pace of change has quickened over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, probably that would be the momentum that will gather, and um, we'll see more changes coming up. I, 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 that's my, my belief. Okay. I mean, the way things go, the way we're having this kind of discussion. But I think let's be civil about it. Be, be, um, I mean, we, we want to, be, to have a serious conversation uh, with good <coughs> intentions and, and let's not view any party as enemies. <coughs> you know, uh, whether the ruling party, the government versus the rest or the rest seeing the ruling party as you know, enemy. I mean, I think it, we, we just have to be cordial and, uh, and go it with, with uh, an open heart. The line is always, yes, by all means, speak freely, but make sure you're responsible. <coughs> Right? If you and say the wrong thing, 
and constructive. Constructive, that's right. But that is a recipe for failure and inertia in the same way that you cannot tell businessmen that you're only get, going to get a business license <coughs> uh, if you can guarantee that you will succeed. Uh, the uh, progress as a society is impossible if you do not allow uh, failure. So then, the, of course, the question is, can we contain the damage from mm. that inevitable failure? Um, here, I would just like to make a simple point that, going back to, uh, to uh, something that I guess we all agree that some limits are necessary, uh, one of the problems in Singapore is that uh, who's policing that, those limits? Yeah? Uh, I think we would make more progress if we decided that, yes, of course, may maybe it is true that we are a largely conservative society. Right? Maybe it is true that you know, we want the tone of debate to be not as strident as in other countries. That may be the case. But who judges? Yeah. One of the problems right now is that an institution with a great deal of vested interest to mute the debate is making those judgment calls. Yeah. What if, is that institution? Uh, I think you can call it the government. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case uh, I was leaving any doubts, right? To me, for some of the issues that you really want to explore, do you feel that there is restriction put on you, i.e. a restriction of your freedom to explore certain topics? You know, um, blogs, certain bloggers and certain commenters have certainly shown up, SPH and MediaCorp, for not exploring certain issues. Obviously, the acquisition process, someone could easily go on GBiz and found certain things that, you know, were very good articles to begin with. You know, so it, it, in your case, Kirsten, you write for Huffington Post. I, I don't know, do you face any political restriction, or any press restriction of your freedom to explore topics? I've never been, like told like you can't write this or you can't write that. What I find really difficult sometimes is that it's very difficult <coughs> to get information. So for example, recently as part of my research on death penalty, I wanted more information. I wanted to know, you know who is on death row, who will be affected by the proposed changes, blah, blah, blah. I wrote to the corporate communications of SPS and every reply I got was, it's not a policy to re uh, review, uh, release confidential um, information. And they could not even explain why this information is confidential. And I even said, you know, in the UN, we promised that we are going to make this information available. Why can't I have it? And then, oh, it's our policy not to review confidential information. You know, not even answering my question. So it becomes very hard to write. Like, even if I want to be responsible and I want to verify my facts, it becomes so difficult to, like, get anything. And then in the end, you <coughs> kind of rely on people you interview, which may or may not be verifiable. And then you, you get afraid of writing because what if, because I can't verify it with official sources, what if it comes out that he was wrong and then I get pulled out and I get in trouble? So, you know, that's, that you get stonewalled when you try to verify. Your so, so I guess in your case, it's a Freedom of Information yes, Act. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, just, what about Richard? Do you feel like you can't write about certain topics? Oh, as long as it's not defamatory. No. In Singapore, it's precisely because we only have limited choice. So people are forced to go online like TRE, TOC or a bunch of other blogs to, to, to so-called print the, the alternative uh, news. Uh. Um, okay. So if you back to your question about me, uh, whether do I have any uh, self-censorship or whatever, I mean, as long as I don't break the laws and it's, it's within the confines of the social political uh, background, then I think it's okay then we'll, we'll just go ahead and publish. Can I just say, as someone who has worked for both uh, mainstream media and in the alternative media space, that I've definitely experienced restrictions in the mainstream media space. Um, I used to work for a, a lifestyle magazine that also covered social issues. I, I won't name the magazine, but if you Google me, you can probably find out. <coughs> and um, we lost our license, had our license suspended once because of editorial, because of content in the magazine. Um, we have been called up by MDA several times because of the stories that we run, which they find have crossed the OB markers. One story in particular was, uh, was an interview with a prominent opposition politician. We published, <coughs> which we published very accurately, and then were told by MDA, no, you cannot publish this so accurately. You have to edit it to fit the tone of you know, this person's, this politician's image out there right now. I think we can all acknowledge that there has been, there has been significant shifts on the ground. And the shifts are going to continue. Now, the onus is on the government, 
those who enforce uh, come up with uh, the policy makers, the legislators, you know, to factor this. It's better to be seen to be opening it on your own volition than to be seen to be doing it because you're forced to. One, uh, Yam King, you mentioned in your opening statement that we need to, journalists must be responsible about putting out the truth. We all know the term truth can mean different things to different people. Whether it's a political arena, the cultural arena, the religious sector, you know, truth is extremely subjective. <coughs> and this, I think, herein lies a lot of the problems we are facing. It's not just truth, it's also logic. The government may have a logic, the opposition may have a logic, the people may have a logic, similarly truth. So when you, when you say we need to, we need, when we expect people, journalists, to be responsible in telling the truth, I find that quite disconcerting because there's an assumption there is this absolute notion of truth and going back to what Sharon says, who defines it? I think the journalist can define it. The journalist must do his or her job in understanding the, the subject matter. truth is not matter. always factual, right? Okay. Um, it's not. Okay. It's, it is interpretation. Correct. So, so that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Truth as in the journalist must believe in what he is or she is writing. That is the minimum, I think. You must be professional, right? Yes, you do your research, your interviews, you form your own judgment, your analysis, and you write the truth. What so, he so, or she believes so, in. So as Elaine said, that particular article on an opposition leader was the truth according to that journalist. Yeah. Why was that yeah. not allowed? Um, may I ask, when, was, when did that happen? <laughs> this was in 2000 and... Yeah, we are 2012. About five or six years ago. So not way back then. I mean, not no, now, no. now either. It's the old yeah. normal. Yeah. Do, do you think, <laughs> do you think it's the, the old same. normal? Old yeah, normal. the old, old yeah. normal, but at the cusp of the, the new so normal. <laughs> so do you think that the same article would have also raised the same eyebrows today? In the mainstream media, possibly. It, it would probably not in your media. Sorry? In, in the media that you work for? I, I work for both, you know, mm. I, I work in the alternative media space with public house, but I earn my living also from mainstream media. I don't mm. think that article will pass in mainstream media. Even yet. today? Yes. Whether it passes yeah. or not, at, as long as there's a perception that it may not pass, mm. already is restrictive. You know, well, uh, just send it to TRM monitors. <laughs> 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 so, so really, I, I think, yeah. I, I feel the need to, to put this across because mm -hmm. I've, I've been hearing this term truth being used quite often, and uh, it, it often means my truth, which you have, you are obliged to accept. But going you know? to what I think Richard was saying about the bias, you know, mm -hmm. everybody has a bias, yes. right? So there's a bias in the truth that the journalists, journalists see it as well. So I think the onus then, I think, is on the, the consumer. How do we form our own judgment? Yes, we may be swayed by shaped by a certain media reporting, but then we must take it upon ourselves to look at what other forms of reporting are there and then for ourselves to, to have our own point of view of okay. ourselves. All right. But you see, for that to happen, mm. it's important for the consumer to have a selection, yes. uh, a, a wide selection yes. of uh, media. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that, um, but although I, I just want to, I mean, toss this, this mm. scenario where, let's say, in, 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 in places like Taiwan, where there are many, many media, and pro-green, pro-blue, and they, may have, they will have their own audience own following. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, 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 the people of the same taking will just go to certain media yeah. or online as well. But you have a choice. You have a choice, yes, right. So that, would, that may also lead to uh, further um, you know, polarization of views because but you that's just... Okay. You, uh, that's you, okay. You can choose. That's but right, right now it's in Singapore, yeah. we only got yeah, white. I, I know. Yeah. So I think it's, <laughs> it's a balance. La. I think it should be... Too, because sometimes it's very chaotic, people give up because it's just too many. I, I just go to the one I like that that reinforce mm -hmm. my own thinking. I think that's what I think we do want it to happen as well. Mm -hmm. But where is the balance? I think that's the most difficult part. Okay. But the issue mm. is that if you talk about people knowing how to question mm. into it's like but as Stanhouse said, if the rest of society is not open up, if people don't know how to discuss, people don't know how to disagree, and people don't know how to go about debate and to question their sources, then it becomes very difficult. Yep. We cannot okay. assume that yes. people are born 
media literate and they know, oh, I must have different sources, I must yeah. corroborate that. So we need to open up everything yeah. else as so, well. So there are many parts uh, that, that need to come together. And do we still see a relevance of the NPPA in its present form? Does it serve a purpose? I see things from a global perspective. So of the 31 advanced countries, we are the, to me, the really the odd one out. So do whatever we can to, you know, get it back to, I mean, we are supposed to be a first world country, then, then let's behave like a first world country rather than keep having um, all these rules and regulations that's, uh, that's uh, slowing us down. Okay, thank you. Really? I think to advance as a society, uh, as a journalistic community, we need to manage the press in a completely different way that the MPPA is doing, use a completely different paradigm. So focus less on the power or an, an, and ownership of media and, and focus more on journalistic standards. We need better standards of journalism here. So I would move away from MPPA completely and think in a different direction and think in terms of like press councils. <coughs> Hmm. You know, um, independent. Can the two coexist? I mean, are they mutually exclusive? Can you not have the NPPA? I think they'll be very uncomfortable bid fellows. Okay. All right. So yes, that would that would be okay. my take. Hmm. Um, personally, I see the NPPA as the major obstacle to not having more diverse and more newspapers in Singapore, and. Um, I remember when I first moved overseas to study and I discovered that there was more than one broadsheet newspaper and I was like, how can you have more than one? How will you know which one is real? <laughs> and, and you know the way my friends, my, uh, my local friends that looked at me, it's like, you know, see they pie say, you know, like, like, like I saw sort of country bumpkin, like, oh my god, how can you have so many newspapers? <laughs> so I feel like, um, if we were to move away from the MPPA, if we were to allow that more diversity, the, the media literacy and the openness will follow. Okay. Don? Well, I definitely think the NPPA should be replaced by something along the lines of the gentleman in the audience suggested, an independent re regime, where, uh, which is non-partisan, which is non-political, which regulates or oversees the uh, conduct of media affairs. And the reason for that, I think, is that the advantages vastly outweigh the disadvantages. <coughs> there are so many benefits in terms of uh, free flow of information, the ability to bring social realities to light, social consensus formation, nation building, uh, attraction of talent, fostering innovation in the economy and so on. And the disadvantages and drawbacks that the NPPA was introduced to address are all very much addressable through the existing laws and are being addressed through the existing laws. Okay, interesting. Cherin. At the moment we have a system where they are accountable to the public via the government. As in many, many other areas of life, we have, in a sense, delegated uh, to the uh, government or outsourced to the government decisions that we should be taking as a society. Uh, it makes life very easy for us lazy Singaporeans, you know, where uh, hard decisions have to be taken by the government. But I think we need to grow up, right? We need to grow up and say that, look, maybe many of these uh, decisions as to what constitutes gross irresponsibility of the, on the part of the press, etc., are decisions that we are capable of taking ourselves. Um, I'm glad that Leon brought out the point that um, you know, international media is available in, Sing in Singapore, but I think there is a difference because these are not the daily watch sheets widely av available to the Singapore readers. So I think that's where um, you, you, you experience where you go to a different country, yet yeah, there are so many choices of broadsheets. And uh, because I think broadsheets, the dailies, are, are, should be critical, uh, essential channels of um, where the public gets information. So for that, I think that there still needs to be a law to, to regulate that. I, 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 I disagree with the earlier point about, oh, it should be totally no law, it's irrelevant, therefore it should be free for all. I don't think it should be. Everything, even your, your telcos need some law, licensing you know, requirements because it is part of our mm. infrastructure. And I think there needs to be some control there. But I think that the Act should be reviewed. It has, it has always been. It, it has changed through, through the years. And um, I, I hear some of the suggestions about, you know, um, about the directorship, you know, the shares and things like that. Um, I think one point about the foreign funds I think that should stay. I really, I think we should still continue with it Singapore. 
Uh, but these other things control whether it's a minister or independent regulator or whatever. I think these are areas that I think we, we should explore. We may all not agree on some issues, but I think on one issue, all of us here as Singaporeans or PRs, I think do agree, which is we can afford to let up. We can afford to trust more. And we can afford to take a chance. We have come five decades. I think we can afford to take a chance on ourselves. On that note, I'd like to thank our panelists. Please join me in thanking our panelists. And thanking you very much.